Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the North Miami Community CRA Advisory Committee meeting of this Monday, May 7th. Uh, can we have a begin with a roll call, please? Yes. Ms. Cobo? Present here. Ms. Cohen? Also here. Mr. Each? Ms. Estime Irvin? Present. Ms. Geimer? Here. Mr. McDermott? Present. Uh, Dr. Melian had an emergency. Yes, he's excused. He's excused. Mr. Reynolds um, did confirm. He's not here yet. <coughs> Mr. Sanchez? Present. Ms. Couch? Present. We have quorum. Okay. Uh, can we uh, can we please uh, move on and, and uh, pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chair, please let the record show that Mr. Reynolds is here. Yeah, Mr. Reynolds has joined us. <coughs> Welcome, sir. Um, can we have a motion to approve uh, April's minutes? I so move. Second. Uh, I have a correction. You have me as absent, and I called in to be excused. Uh, I emailed last month. Okay, so we'll please adjust to that. It's, I mean, it is absent on the vote, oh, okay. but it is excused oh, okay. here. Okay. So it, it is. Okay. okay. Any other ad additions or deletions? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Carol, Ms. Mm -hmm. Geimer to, um, for the minutes, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, can we move on to agenda item number one? Yes. All right. Good evening, everyone. Please find attached a rehabilitation grant request from Ribeiro International Investments. Uh, the property is located at 12355 Northeast 13th Avenue. Ribeiro Investments um, LLC um, is the property owner. It's about uh, 27,000 square feet um, warehouse subdivided. They have 22 tenants. Um, one of them is the Scargo Brewery, where we, which we gave a business grant. The Scargo Brewery uh, is using three of their bays. Um, they are applying for a grant to do renovations on the exterior. If you look at the pictures, you can see it's like it's the orange building that's on the warehouse. They're applying for a rehab grant for the exterior renovations to turn it into a more modern looking building with paint, um, driveway, signage, appropriate signage, some bathroom repairs, um, and some roof repairs. Um, some of the bathrooms that they have in the common areas are, need to be ADA um, compliant. Um, attaches a list of their tenants, and I'm very pleased to, to see, I was surprisingly um, pleased to see that they already have several of their tenants are like recording studios, some designers in addition to the Scargo Brewery. So um, since, the, since the acquisition of this property, they have been working on you know, getting the types of tenants that we've been looking for into that area, into Industrial Arts District. Um, here representing Ribeiro Investments is Mr. Felipe Ribeiro and his partner and the partner's wife, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. They flew in from Brazil because they actually live in Brazil. So they flew in for today and tomorrow's meeting. They have a property manager, Mr. Douglas Barbosa, who takes care of the day-to-day -day operations. He's not here today, but they wanted to be here in person. Um, so if you have any questions, Mr. Felipe Ribeiro is here for we any additional them. questions. Okay. You want to uh, step up and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Felipe. I'm from Brazil. So uh, I'm in Miami this week to, uh, to be present and also this meeting and uh, to say that I'm very excited that this project is going to move on. And uh, we already have uh, a tenant that is also got a grant from the CRA, which is the Skaga Brewery. And we're very excited to have these renovations happening in the building. Okay. So this is for, um, so the total cost, um, the minimum total cost was 199,404, and as um, is required by, per our guidelines, um, they're requesting, you know, the 50% match, no more than 100,000, so it would be 99,702. Um, Okay. And again, what is going to, what's this the scope? This is the exterior facade. So it's exterior paint, 
of the building. Um, the landscape, the driveway, the signage on the exterior part of the building. They're actually changing the name I saw to Nomi Industrial Arts, I think. They're changing the name of the building. And they need to do some ADA bathroom repairs inside in the common areas and some roof <coughs> repairs. Okay. Uh, my question is, who is overseeing the project since you don't live here? Oh, we already have a, a manager, uh, l like she said, Douglas Barbosa, who, who oversees day -day. and he manages. Is he going to oversee the, is he the person that does the day-to-day -day management going to oversee this project also? Also, my brother-in-law, who's, who's present at this meeting, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, focused on that, so he'll be... Uh, does he live here? Yeah, he lives in Miami, yeah, okay. with my sister, right. Karina, right. they're right there. Right. Yeah. Okay. I just, want, I just know how it is when, you, when someone's not there watching. Yeah, and, and that's why yeah. I made sure I commented on he came in, right. but he has right. a, a project manager right. there for the day-to-day -day ensuring of, you know, the tenants' rents, and I actually worked with Mr. Barboza to ensure that all his tenants had the proper licenses and everything, so we've been working together that's great. on that. Okay. Now, one of the tenants in the, in the building already has a CRA grant, right? Yes, the Scarger Brewery. They and that are wouldn't be just, a conflict. Just a, no. no. Um, okay. But just for an update, the reason why this cargo has been taking forever is because they were at Durham, which um, took forever. But we are now, um, on Wednesday, I'm meeting with this cargo and the city building official to finalize their permitting so they can actually start the work. But um, the holdup has been working with the Durham on the grease trap, the fire, and, uh, and so right. on and so forth. So we're actually now at the end. We're, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. Good. Okay. Does anybody have any questions of the applicant? No, you need a grease trap for the brewery. Uh, I, I, no, I, I think it's going to be, I, I mean, that whole area, if, if, if uh, Tri-Rail ever really does start, uh, build a station there, then it will really take off. But it's a natural. So right. Be, yeah. Okay. I'm All right. The motion. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much and Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Tomorrow 5.30 be here. Um, the next item is Liberty Gardens Park uh, design presentation. Um, as you recall, um, this is actually like a, a little bit, I have to give you some history to it. The day pack, the downtown advisory planning action board, the downtown action and advisory board, can pass this over? Um, part of their work has been to, to do some enhancements into our downtown. And they have been working with, um, through CPMD, um, they had a, acquired, a, a, I think, a designer and architect, Calvin Giordano, and they have a CDBG grant to do a design. I think they went through a, a whole long process to do a design to activate the Liberty Garden Park. And finally, I just, I just want to give um, Mr. Kent Walia from our sustainability um, department through CPND. He's the one that actually <laughs> came up with the best design, <laughs> which is kind of funny, um, after talking to all these experts. And he's the one that actually came with the best design, the best use for the Liberty Gardens. So based on the initial design that he made, we now um, acquired the services of a professional designer to make it come to fruition. So I'm going to let um, Kent explain to you what it is. Now, re remember, this Liberty Gardens Park was already in our budget to be done. It was approved in our budget. We just hadn't done it yet. So I'm very happy to see that it's actually moving forward. And also, Kent, you'll be able to give us a proper timeline as to when it's going to be done. Sure. OK. So to you. What's it here? Good evening, um, advisory board members. Good uh, evening. The following project, as uh, Rasha mentioned, is the Liberty Gardens project. And then we can get the PowerPoint here. Mm -hmm. As you can see on the screen, this is the um, kind of the north side of the property facing north. So just to give you a heads up on where the location of the Liberty Gardens Park is, it's, a, uh, it's an existing park that the city owns. It's a space in between two buildings. Uh, it's a breezeway connecting an existing parking lot <coughs> right here. So this would be the motor realm, the, par the motor vehicle realm, the automobile realm, connecting you to the downtown which is the pedestrian realm in the shopping area. So that's the purpose of this park, which was originally construed. It is located in the Arts and Overlay District in the city, and it's right across the street from basically MOCA right here. Mm -hmm. And over the years, uh, the project, the, the park, 
has experienced some vandalism with graffiti, uh, poor drainage problems, and I'll show you some photos as well. Uh, the landscaping is kind of eroded a little bit. Uh, the lighting is bad. And then there's some columns there, some thick columns that pose some uh, safety issues because it uh, blocks visibility. So when people are kind of driving along the road, they don't even know that this is a park. They just think it's just a, you know, a place to walk through. However, that wasn't the purpose of it. So back in 2014, the mayor and council and, you know, with numerous uh, city uh, uh, meetings during the downtown action plan advisory committee process, uh, the mayor and council approved the concept and action plan, which identified this project along with many others as capital projects to revitalize the downtown in the city. So as you can see, these are some existing conditions. It's right out here across the street on 125th. Um, so you can see these columns here kind of block the entranceway in the front. And you see these monolithic columns here on the left side. And even you see, you know, like some existing mural painting in the background that's kind of chipping and fading as well. And then there's some paving here that's not draining too well. So here are some views from the back, views from the side. So what we're proposing is to remove the columns, kind of open up this park and bring it back to the original purpose of the park as to create this transition realm between the automobile and the pedestrian realm and also activate it, since it's in our arts and overlay, as an artist's ex exhibition space. So let me just go back one more slide here. So it also has the opportunity of, in case there's another business that might come in here, you can also activate this place as like cafe style seating if possible as well, but it just has opportunities to adapt. So the, play, the space is kind of narrow in nature, it's not too wide. So what you wanna do to activate it, to make it interesting, and also be strategic at the same process is to meander the walkway, as you can see here. And you have curvilinear uh, benches, um, strategic uh, points of interest where you can put exhibition spaces like artists' um, paintings and different art murals and maybe even sculptures. So the northern, the, the, well, the western part of this wall would be a green wall here, and then the eastern wall would be art murals. And then you would have um, identification signage and curved benches. So here's another detail of where some of these um, items would go. You'll have a landscape trellis, um, which would have bougainvillea plants. You would have um, creeping, crawling uh, green wall that would be going here on the west side wall here that would expand the entire wall softening up the space. And then they will all be flowering plants, most of which would, you would utilize some of the existing plants there, and then you'll just add native plants to it and drought tolerant planting. So here's some of the existing plants and trees that are on the site. And we plan on utilizing those to keep the cost down and also keep the effect of lush landscaping. Because some of these plants are you know, kind of overgrown in there, they're, they're full. So you just may want to just trim them up, keep them neat, and then you have full-grown plants already there. So here's some renderings at night. So currently what's involved at the site is you have dim lighting to no lighting. Most of the light fixtures are out. So if you're walking from the parking lot to the stores along 125th, it's kind of a dark place to go and you got columns kind of blocking the view of people, so you really can't see what's going on there, so it's not too safe. You remove the columns, you add in lighting, and you open it up. Suddenly, you can make the place more attractive. And then also, you can use the lighting features to illuminate the purposes of the park as an artist's exhibition space. So you would have landscape lighting and tree lighting and bollards as well. So, as I mentioned here on the west side wall, you would have a crawling landscape wall, green wall, 
you would have these landscape trellises here with bougainvillea plants, which has been implemented in other cities. Um, so the technique of using these trellises for bougainvillea actually has been working. And then you would have um, banners or murals here on the eastern wall that, you know, this wall expands 40 feet in the air. So you can go up to 40 feet, or if you want to have it like 30 feet or 25 feet, you can have these large banners that can rotate um, during seasons or every quarter or you know semi-annually for um, artists to go ahead and do. So this would be a section view here, that western wall here. And then you, like I said, you have the opportunity, you know, in the event that there's a store that comes in here that wants to utilize this park space for cafe style seating, you can always punch in doors here because this green wall is kind of like a fixed wall, which opportunity to kind of open it up as well. And here would be the uh, Liberty What's Gardens. on the east wall over there? The east wall, which I'm gonna show you right now, oh, is right here. So the you would have ones. these banners that you can replace. So what an artist would do is you can have a call for ideas or have someone submit through Mocha. And instead of, you have two options really, which I prefer the first one. You, an artist comes in here and submits an artist, an art panel, because you can have these as rotating panels, don't have to be the same panel. Then you print a banner of this art panel. And then the city or, or the contractor will go ahead and install this panel. So it will stay there for, you know, it could be a quarter, it could be semi-annually, versus going up there and painting the whole wall, which would be laborious and it would take a long time. And also, since it's a city park, you know, there would be some, you know, liability involved, you know, for scaffolding and all that stuff there. So making it a banner would probably be ideal for this place and be easy to install and replace. Well, if, if uh, this gets done, the city will have a, an ongoing budget to maintain it. Right. You know, I'm concerned about, yeah, we do this, and then it, it starts shredding, and mm -hmm. and the west sun face it, will face that, and of course fade it, and so you know if it stays up too long. So I just want to make sure that we do something pretty. That's great, but it has to be maintained. So right. the CRA funds require us to maintain whatever it is okay. that we do okay. through the life of the CRA. After okay. that, it's on the city. Okay. But okay. <laughs> and currently, the city maintains the landscaping in this park already. They just need to frequent it more. No, the city should maintain, maintain. it yes. now. It's not, it's it's not yes, adequate. Yeah. I have a question. I don't walk through <clears> it anymore. Yeah. I have a question. I would like to know what is the protection at night? How you will prevent people going in to have lunch and sex and smoke marijuana and all the things that they wanted? Because we have a park behind Villa Maria, and we have to remove all the benches everything because at night the teenagers a bunch of people used to go there to smoke to have sex to do whatever they want to do what is the protection do you have gain to close that thing at uh, eight o'clock at nine o'clock i do you not have um CRA, I mean, police officers that patrol the area mm -hmm. now we do in our downtown we we do have police have officer will have to be 24 like 7 there so Walk through it, now. I don't so it has to be bright no, lights. I, I, I yeah, I know that we have. Some, I, I think Officer Beige comes here, or Chief Beige, Chief Beige yeah. comes here every month to report what the right. CRA officers mm -hmm. are doing in the downtown area and also um, on the seven times. We will, we will uh, talk to Chief Beige about security um, issues, but right now the park it's not closed. It's a it's a throughway between yeah. the. And we'll make sure that whatever it is that we do, the CRA officers will have that as part of their and, check. And I don't forget we have the camera program yeah. as yes. well. Right, and I so think lighting would make a difference. Yes. There's a lot of activity right there. It's just that it was got to be so poorly maintained. I used to go through there all the time, and I just don't do it anymore. But if it was lit, well, I would. The activity that this park will attract would automatically keep people's eyes on it plus opening it up because right now those thick blocks that are blocking the view of it mm -hmm. creates safety concerns I agree now I agree. opening it up completely removing the monolithic blocks you have a straight corridor and it makes the space bigger because you're removing that mass 
so it allows more visibility to come right. from 125th in the lighting as well. Oh, I think that's great. Uh, are, the, are the columns in the very front at the entrance, are, all that, that, are they going to be removed? Yes. So it's, there's nothing, it's just no, a straight nothing shot. No, nothing obscuring the line of sight. That'd be nice. The other question thing is, um, you know, the Bucanvillia, I guess, unless it gets very intense of sunlight, it doesn't bloom. So I don't know if this is going to give it enough light during the day to, to give you that intense bloom yeah, well. that you would like. You have a, right here, you have like a western sun because this wall here is 20 feet. This is 40 feet. So that sunlight, when at 12 o'clock, it stands right above it. Okay. And then when you start going to 1, 2, 3, 4 o'clock, it starts going more facing the east, but right. it's setting in the west. So it shines directly on the hottest part of the day on these on the middle part of this part. That, that doesn't really encourage people to sit there at lunch, though, does it? Well, the trellis here, once you put enough bougainvillea in it, you can create some shade here for people to want to sit underneath it. Yeah. You're going to still have a lot of that sun, hence you know why this is designed like this to provide some shade. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, during the night, you know, it can be activated too as well. But during the day, they'll have some room for shade. Of course, the good thing is they don't take much water. Right. Mm -hmm. but, however, we will put irrigation. There is okay, existing right. irrigation out there, but we will add to it. Right. In, in the lighting, you want to, I don't want to hog that. Go ahead. <laughs> in the lighting that you're showing, are those down lights on the benches? Is that what they are? So These they benches are, here will be LED lights. Well, I know that, but what, are they pointing on the benches? Are they pointing down or are they pointing up? Down. So they're in, in direct light all the way all the way around. Right, illuminating the path. Yeah. Illuminating the path. So, you, do you think that you need more light? Some light, some broad, like generalized lighting that's right somewhere on the wall. Yes. So you would have two things. You would have. Lighting along the landscaping, right. you would have bollards illuminating your pathway at a pedestrian yeah, level. They don't do anything. And then there's existing like lantern lights as well. So our light okay. study, we did a light study on this pathway here that identified the trees and identified these like these uh, bollards here. Now, if you're looking at more pedestrian scale lighting, I could ask that question as well. But I, just, I just know that people are, people particularly women, at night are very, very sensitive about it, things being very well lit. So I don't know, if, unless it, they feel safe, they're not going to walk through it, unless they're with a couple of other people. Well, I think one of the, th one of the keys is whether we can get a restaurant in there of some kind, which will be you know, well, that's interactive. High in sky. That's high yeah. in the sky right now. We're, yeah. we're doing this project. Mm -hmm. But all those, <coughs> all those little yellow dots are lights? Yes. Yeah. All of these dots are lights in, <coughs> inside the entire pathway. And then you would have lights here at the... Um, what yeah. type of lights? So here, these icons here represent what kind of light is going where. So your straight lighting would be, to your, uh, to your point, Clark, some... Lighting on the wall that kind of shines that would, down. That would, that would so yeah, that, that lighting on the wall goes here, here, <laughs> here, and here. So along these featured walls. So so you'll actually have a lot of light there. Yes. Okay. Oh, and so you're illuminating the banners. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if the banners are illuminated well enough to see, yeah. then that's well, going to give you that, the combination is going to give you a good bit of light. It just depends yeah. on how. I mean, how bright you make. You, but you can experiment with that. That's pretty sure. handy. Yeah. <coughs> now, what's the total project cost going to be? Well, the estimated budget cost that we got was about two hundred forty thousand. The CR is contributing one hundred and thirty because that's what was approved. I think Councilman Keys has some money in her district, um, and then they have a CDBG grant. That's how this all started. Block they grant. had a CDBG grant that they needed to use, so we have okay. the funds for it. Okay. 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 We yeah we, we may be a little short so we're gonna have to get some alternates when we send it out for bid to see where the bids come in to what we have budgeting. Right. So, so I just want to verify that you have spoken to the councilwoman in that district and she 
Yes, she's the one. She actually is the yeah. one that okay. didn't like, you know, like she was very vocal when she saw this one that this was the best one. I, I love it. Yeah. I think it's great. I, I, think, it's I think it's very nice. Has I think the price is a very good price for what you're doing. So. Right. Have you, anybody here attended the day back meetings? I attended a few, but it got the presentations boring. were like very outlandish. They had a whole bunch very. of things over the. Like yeah. It was. It was, oh. it was well, a million this is dollars too. Yeah, they were looking oh at a million dollars of, right. you know, the designs and stuff. Million. So. A million dollars. Yeah, we're yeah. very pleased. That's not that big a place. No. It's yeah. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, this is an item that's I already been lovely. approved. Correct. Congratulations. Russia. Thank you. Russia. Thank you, Mr. Walia. Can we turn on the light? Um, I th no, there's nothing to prove. It was just a oh, presentation. Yes. Oh, okay. It's right. just a presentation, just a presentation for you to know. It was already approved. It was already okay. approved. Yeah. Motion to congratulate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you say so. Well, no, if you have any other favor. requests. Yeah. 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 Right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you, Mr. Williams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's so funny. Rashi, you want to yes. report to us on the uh, <laughs> yes. couple things? Just first, uh, Mr. Each. Um, is yes, joined us. Joined us on the record. Thank you. And Mr. Zalkowitz, our attorney, so for the record. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to give you a couple of updates before this. Um, the nail bar is open. The nail bar, Chinatown, that we gave a grant to, it's beautiful. Right. They're going to do, they're on their soft opening phase right now, which is they're open, but um, they're doing walk ins and so on. And uh, we're going to schedule a grand opening for you guys to come. We here, Spa, as you had asked me, they're done and everything except the property. This is what we go through, right? The property manager for that strip um, did some work um, without a permit. And um, so that's a no they no. won't get their, from the building department, um, they won't get their CU and the CO from the building department until he pulls a permit, which is what he's doing. He apparently re like replaced an AC and he tried to sneak it in through when we were doing the repairs. No, you don't know what I mean. But he tried to, you know, and he tried to sneak it in as like work that we did. And it's like, no, it has nothing to do with it. And Mr. Beswick caught it, so he had to come in and pull a permit. Mr. Gary Beswick? Yes, Mr. Mr. Gary, Gary Beswick. Beswick. Oh, he's a terror. Oh, no, yeah. he's, he's, but he does his job so well, though. He does, I know. Yeah, I know, he's and, very and sharp. So Gary's the, the very sharp. The property manager himself has to come and pull a permit to, to legalize it, and then she'll get right. her CEO, and then we're going to also have an opening. So I wanted to share that with you. I have experienced okay. Mr. Beswick. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love him. So, um, a, the apparel textile sourcing trade show. I think I, I mentioned to you a, a while back that we've been working with the China Chamber of Commerce for import export of textiles. They, um, I think Ms. Couch, you, you weren't here in those, in those okay. days, but it was like a two year process. They moved, they relocated from the West Coast to the East Coast. This is their first trade show. It's May 21st to the 23rd at Mana Wynwood. Um, we have a booth, the City of North Miami and CRA, that we have a, a booth there, complimentary, to showcase the city for business Sorry, attraction. What date was that? May 21st to the 23rd, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Um, the ribbon cutting is May 21st at 10 o'clock. Um, the city manager, Councilman Desulme, um, and maybe some of the other um, council people will be attending. It's free, so I encourage you and if you have the time. Is it? Mana Winwood which is the, in Wynwood, it's a huge conference room. It's on Northwest Fifth Avenue and, and 23rd Street. I'll email you the address Thank you. If, um, for you to attend. The most important thing is Councilman Desulme and the city manager will be on a panel discussion about East and West investment and partnership and, and businesses. Um, it is an opportunity for us to showcase not only the city in North Miami, uh, but obviously the CRA and the redevelopment that we're um, trying to do on Northwest Seventh Avenue. So um, that is one of the, relationships that we developed over a year ago when they read the article about the Chinatown, they flew in, they're like, I wanna meet you guys, and then they saw the value in the investment. So now our responsibility is to market ourselves for more businesses and more tenants and, and things like that. They actually wanted to offer us another free booth for any local businesses that did apparel, manufacturing, and mm -hmm. textile in the CR in the city, but I couldn't find any, we, we have, we don't have any fashion designers. We have people who buy clothing and sell, but no textile and, and fashion design. So maybe that's something we wanna look into one day 
Um, but it was it was very cool that they were able to offer us this this opportunity. Um, second of all, um, thank you to those of you that came to the TOD meeting um, um, last month in April. I have a save the date for May 24th. Um, again, it'll be at six o'clock. It's here. This is with IBI Group. This is the consulting team that we hired to help us with the okay. mobility hub and the TOD, which means Transit Oriented Development Strategic Plan. This is with the aspiration that the tri -roll station will be will stopping one run, run on 123rd one, and 13th <laughs> Avenue. Um, and also looking at the transportation and the connectivity with Biscayne, West Dixie, Northeast Sixth Avenue, 125th Street, and so on. 123rd and 13th Avenue. Yeah, that's that yeah. area, that intersection. Any corner is a go, because people keep asking me, is that this proper? I'm like, I can't tell you. Until we do the master plan, until they oh, okay. determine I these be on things. 14th Avenue. 14th. Yeah, well, maybe on the other side. It's, not it's wherever the train tracks are. Okay. Well, but we are. We will be. Um, once the designation is done, we will need to provide some kind of. For them, it's more of a platform. But we want to take advantage of that and redevelop that area um, and provide and, and more than where are we platform. With this, um, 151st Street and. Biscayne Boulevard nonsense with FIU pushing for it and uh, as far as I've been told, pushing for it. As far as I've been told by the manager, they're pushing for it, but we have our designation, so we will operate with the fact that we have the designation. So that's well, the whole that's idea just. behind that was to revitalize that area between the tracks and 16th when I was talking to the planners and have a compact urban center in there to do something to revitalize the city instead of the, you know. But, the, you know, we could also, there. we can still provide, the same way right now we have the Nomi Express, we provide a loop from that stop to here mm -hmm. to get it going. I mean, there are other alternatives well, that we need I, to look I, at. I think that's a good place because that was the core for the city, right. to mm -hmm. redevelop the city, not on 151st Street exactly. to placate <laughs> FIU. I mean, that's so I'm leaving that to the interested parties, but you know your county commissioners. Well, I, you know uh, your I'm sorry people I missed to talk the last to. meeting. I seen it on the computer after it was over. May yeah, I, I did and try no, to that call was you. On the 18th. Yeah. It was the 18th. I did try calling you personally, but I, I didn't get anybody. But anyway, May 24th, it'll be here. It, we actually, it was Is a it great Is it the same experience. meeting as the prior one? It's the what? Is it a replay of the one? No, we no, had? no, no. It's oh, based yeah, on their analysis yeah, now. They're going to give you an update and get some oh, okay. tweaking and so on. One thing that we did, which was very cool, they had these little remotes, uh -huh. yeah. and you did the survey right, on site. Right. Right. It was very cool, and they got a lot of positive feedbacks. Um, lastly, business workshop. Um, we are doing a business workshop Thursday, May 17th at 6.30 at Griffin Community Center. This is not like the usual workshops that we do when we talk about Siri. This is more of a one-on-one. -on -one um, a intensive um, kind of a workshop. So businesses, local businesses or businesses wanting to move in need to call and make a reservation so we can sit down with them. A lot of the challenges um, and comments and criticisms I've gotten is that, you know, a lot of the grants that we're giving out are for people that are pretty much established, but I'm trying to explain to them a lot of them is because there are certain things that are missing, they're lacking. This um, is new for new business applications? Not only new businesses, but existing businesses within the CRA that need a grant. And, but and that's that 24th you know, at what time? You no, know, it's May 17th, 17th at 6.30 at Griffin Center. How is this being um, advertised to them? Um, it's on the Haitian radio right now. Um, Cassandra just told me she just sent it out in an e-blast, and we're going to do the, you know, and even the code compliance department is passing out flyers for me. So what I was was trying to say is that sometimes they don't even realize it, the fact that they don't have an active BTR or a CU mm -hmm. or they have a violation, mm -hmm. if they resolve it, they can still get the grant. And but what they time is that on the 17th? 6.30. 6.30. It's on the back. Yeah. So it's on the back. There's a flyer in your package. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm working with another gentleman who's going to be there to help them understand their sun biz requirements. You know, some people don't realize it, that they leave it, let it lapse, and then, then they can't afford it. Then they start a new name and, you know, and so on and so forth. And also, he's going to give them a little training about learning about how to do payroll and make sure that you're getting paid as part of the business so you can build some kind of um, history and, and record. Um, it is, you know, a lot, like I said, a lot of the applications we get, we try to work with people, but sometimes it's just they're so deep into things that they just didn't want to pay attention to. And I, and we can't give them a grant because we have to see that, we have to see that it's actually going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And we can, you know, see that it happens. Where are we at with the study on affordable housing? 
The, it is uh, being signed by the mayor right now. I think you had missed a few meetings. It was delayed because- No, I, I didn't miss any meetings. Did you, were you no, there no, when no, I said no, that I FIU- I CRA meetings. Did, were you there when I said that FIU was holding it up? For yeah, the, yeah, you, okay. I remember that, yeah. So they finally, where's, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Steven, <laughs> why am I talking? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, you, uh, that's you right. You finally yeah. were able to get a resolution with FIU that we that own our product. Our yeah, product. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so after he was able to get that done, um, it's going through the signature process right now. So Steven um, signed it. So it, it, it's completed. No. No, it's what? The agreement, the contract is now being signed. Also, we haven't done it. No, because oh, they okay. wouldn't. Like I said, they wouldn't allow oh, us. Oh, okay. I was under the impression that it was done, but they weren't no. releasing it. No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. We don't. We don't work that way. Huh? You need to agree to the terms before we. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Thank yeah. You. Okay. So that's where we are now. Now that the mayor, it's in the mayor's office to be signed. Stephen has signed it. FIU has signed it. Um, now it's the city clerk. Then it's done. They can start the work. Thank you. Okay. After that, oh, one last announcement. Um, after the June meeting, we have no, we're not accepting any more commercial grants. We've reached our, you know, we've gotten more grants again um, than we had funding for. <coughs> so whatever is already in the system is the only ones that we're processing. And, you know, I'll bring you back an update and a report. Um, but again, we had budgeted a million dollars. So um, we've received a million dollars worth of grants. We reviewed and processed a million dollars worth of grants for this fiscal year. Wow. Um, which I think is a good thing because if you look at the past, right. we, you know, it was a little, little trickle, dribble, trickle, dribble. trickle, and now we're actually making things happen. Um, so anybody else who's interested, what I'm telling them is they can still go through the process right now because it takes a while to get proper bids and for it to be properly reviewed so that as of October 1, when the new fiscal year starts, you could be the first ones um, through the door, just like Wingstop had done. And hey, by the way, did you see the Wingstop sign? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Looks nice. They're moving Looks very nice. quickly now. Again, it's a uh, uh, strip center between 9th, Northeast 9th, and 10th. Right. The great where Grateful Bread used to be. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's okay. moving because we say Grateful Bread. Yeah. Um, uh, so, I again, the delay for Clark that was yeah. Durham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the delay for that, again, was Durham. I mean, yeah. There's nothing you can do, but I think we're, we're better at helping our grantees deal with Durham faster as long as they listen to us and know what they need to do so they won't be delayed okay. and okay. get rejected. I All would right. say also that it's, we, Rasha, and the building department have good information. Many times people don't listen. Mm -hmm. Right. They just go, I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, then they don't do it, right, do it right, and then they turn it in, then it gets rejected. Right. And then they get something back, and then they go for the, for the permit at this point, and they say, well, yeah, but you don't have this, this, and this. And they said, what? Yeah, but you know, you need this, this, and, and we this. are talking to professionals, too. Yeah. We're talking to lay people, we're talking to engineers and, it's all and architects. There. It's all in front of you, it's all, yeah. It's yeah. But we're yeah. doing, we're, we're like, for instance, like I said, the SCARGA, we're doing a final enemy. meeting with yeah. them on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and after that, they should be done, ready to work. Clark, what are they going to do? Uh, I noticed the wall, remember the, the, the wall next to Wednesday? That's not, that's the, oh, you know, I don't know, I don't know, except it's very ugly. Well, no, you're, you're jumping ahead because that's <laughs> something I was going to talk about in June. Okay, um, well, we can wait till okay, June. Okay, but just a little sneak peek. Um, we are, part of our plan was to do art, you know, the murals and the utility wrapping. Right. Okay, so now that we have a new director, Ms. Shana Sheldon, who's there to help me with the Art and Public Places program, we are going to start um, working on that. So I've actually been working with this young man who's a, a resident of the city, he's a landscape architect, very nice and energetic gentleman, and we've been mapping out these properties throughout, and we're, we're doing a walking gallery. So that property. So that's not my property. No, that's, that's IMC, that's yes. where the 50 that's state used to be. Right, right. right. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. and you know, they were gonna apply for a, another grant for beautification, and we, we swapped. If you give me the wall and let me put a mural, We'll pay for it as part that of the grant. As, as you're going yeah, yeah. You're going yeah where, where the plants yeah. were. Yeah. Um, right so by the gentleman, Wingstop. Hmm? Right next to Wingstop. Yeah, right next to Wingstop. So the gentleman, that'll be for June when I do the presentation. So now that the part of the LDR has had a zoning requirement or a zoning restriction for murals, right? right. Downtown is one of them. West Dixie has it and also by the train tracks. So phase one, since we're trying to activate the downtown, is to focus on these areas that are kind of dead. Um, that need that kind of activation. 
So we're doing um, the utility boxes and we're doing these specific walls. Um, and Stephen is sending me the license for the property owners. And we've done similar mural projects in other CRAs in Allendale Beach. Okay. So we have what's called a mural license agreement with the owner of the property allows us to go onto the property, install the mural, maintain the, the mural, mural. Um, for a period, I think it's five years with a five year option. Yes. So um, now that he's done the mapping, which is a very important part, now I'm working with Shauna on um, the call to artist because we have to do, we have to follow certain guidelines, put it out to bid, um, have artists bring their ideas, um, local na artists, national, and so on and so forth. So that's one of the projects that we're gonna, we're starting it now, but once we present it in the, it's in the budget for next year and it's approved, we would like to kickstart it like right away so you can start seeing some actual um, enhancements. So the, one of the, the panels that he was talking about, Liberty Gardens, is one of the call to artists, mm -hmm. oh, okay. you know, projects we're gonna that's we're gonna wonderful. have in there. That's just, that's right. Great. So you jumped right. ahead. Sorry about that's that. That's for June. That's, yeah. the, that's, that's for one June. of the presentations. Uh, for our city attorney, anything? Uh, city, uh, CRA, CRA attorney. attorney. No report. No report. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Chief Bria Burden is here with us. Um, welcome. And congratulations. Is there anything that you'd like to report on the downtown? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, okay. It's not on the agenda. Oh, okay. Not on the All right. In June. In, in June. She'll okay. I guess we'll see you in June. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Is there any old business to come before us? Any new business? Can I have a motion for adjournment? I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you all very much. Uh, thank you.